Welcome to Wine Vault TV. I'm pretty excited today, as you can tell, because we've got two fantastic wines um, to taste today. Cloudy Bay, which pretty much gave New Zealand its name for winemaking. Um, it's kind of revered all over the world um, as the top wine from New Zealand, although it has lost some of its um, gloss over the last few years with um, Certainly a lot of kind of overproduction and I'm going to say fairly average wines or wineries making wines similar to Cloudy Bay so kind of um, that have taken over and now Cloudy Bay basically um, has refocused and they've got some fantastic wines being made here um, although I have just heard that Kevin Judd is leaving Cloudy Bay um, to go and make his own wines for himself under his own label, which is a uh, pretty sad to see him depart from Cloudy Bay. He really gave them world class um, wines that they could take all over the world, and and really it was a showcase for New Zealand, and um, especially Marlborough Sauvignon, which um, back in the mid '80s. Um, really put New Zealand on the map as a new world wine making place and also as a, as a wine destination. And um, so that's the 07. And then the Pisa range is from Central Otago um, from the Pisa range and um, it's a fairly small um, vineyard um, that makes just fantastic examples of Central Otago Pinot, not the over-extracted, over-fruit driven wines which are very sweet, but more European in style. So um, let's crack on with this first one. It's a lot more elegant than, um, than it used to be. It's very restrained right off the nose, it's got kind of nice lush sweet fruit with that kind of very typical Marlborough Sauvignon smell which is quite sweaty, it's asparagus, it's tin peas um, and cat's pea. It's actually a really nice and pleasant nose. It's actually, it's very good. It's, it's a very rich, um, sweet fruit, but not sweet from sugar, just the, the sweetness comes from the fruit. But it's actually quite velvety in the mouth. It gives it a nice, warm feeling in the mouth. And um, a, a nice kind of river stone almost taste on the on the on the palate and it's really really pleasant so marks for the this as a kind of shining star uh, that's dimmed slightly over the last few years um, I've still got to give this 91 points which for me, and I've never been a real big fan of Marlborough Sauvignon, I've got to say that I would quite happily drink that until the cows come home. And this one, which I'm very excited about, Pisa Range. The vineyard is absolutely beautiful. The wines are kind of in complete contrast to the environment because it's raw, it's rugged, you've got big hills either side, you've got a, a massive big lake and reservoir in front but the wines are so delicate and generally balanced um, and, and I like that kind of contrast um, I get almost a, a chocolate smells
disappointed. This is a bit of a bugger because I thought that um, this was going to be my kind of wine of the week. It's got everything going for it. But it's two dimensional rather than three dimensional. It's fairly linear. It just, from the front, just goes straight to the back. And there's little variants on either side of the palette. So you get really nice fruit. It's quite velvety with some really fine kind of coca tannins, um, fine grain tannins that are still there, but it doesn't touch either side of here, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and, it, and it doesn't change from the front to the back. Um, there's a certain minerality to it that which I quite like, and a, a bit of earthiness, but it. I'm going to say it's 2006 and this is 2009, so th well, probably three years or just under three years. And it doesn't feel like a lot has changed in this wine. Um, that may be due to the screw cap. Um, but yeah, for a $45 wine, I kind of expected more. I mean, it is very good Central Otago Pinot, but when you pay $45, and um, I always bang on about Ripon and Profits Rock being the best from Central Otago, and I always had this in kind of third place, it just lacks $45 worth of value. It should be $35. And I know that economics being the way that they are, kind of, you've got to hand-pick Pinot fruit, otherwise you end up with a very generic style. But still for $45, wines with a screw cap, where they're saving money anyway, should be better than this. But it is a good example of Central Otago Pinot on the other hand. So my rating for this is probably going to be 87, probably just grasping kind of 88 but no more so there wraps it up two wines one from Marlborough New Zealand's biggest and most famous wine region and a Central Otago Pinot which is probably New Zealand's kind of up-and-coming area still to be discovered by a, a lot of kind of America and and um, parts of Europe but yeah, I'd probably still keep this as my third best wine from Central Otago. I just wanted a bit more out of it. Okay, cheers.